So, um, use the substitution u equals cos x to find the exact value of this integral. So remember, we start by differentiating. If u is cos x, then we need to differentiate it to u by the x. Oh no, is it positive or negative when we differentiate cos? Ah, CD music system. Cos differentiates to minus sign. What a great way of remembering that. Well done for not saying the other way. Right, so we've got that. We're going to do the substitution. Um, what else have we got here? Well, we, we need to get rid of dx. So let's rearrange this slightly so that we recognize that this says, actually, I'm going to write this as minus du is sine x dx. And we're kind of, we're spotting a little bit where we're going to get to with this. We, we've got, you're not happy with that, are you? <laughs> We've got a sine x dx in there. It's sine cubed, but it's, it's kind of in there. And we're going to swap that with the, the du. Really, really not happy? It's just a right, sorry. If we do that substitution, the integral is going to become, let's see what we get. Uh, we'll sort the limits out in a moment. I'm replacing sine x dx with <coughs> minus du. So I've got minus du. That leaves me with a sine, well, let's, let's write them. We're left with a sine squared x and a cos squared x in there that we need to work with. Um, now, the cos squared x, that's easy, isn't it? Because that's going to be u squared. We want to get this sine squared in terms of u as well. Well, I actually, remember, if cos squared x is u squared, then 1 minus sine squared x is equal to u squared as well, isn't it? Because cos squared, cos squared is the same as 1 minus sine squared. So sine squared is 1 minus u squared. So I think I'm ready to finish off my substitution now. I've got the sine squared is 1 minus u squared. Cos squared is u squared. And I've got du. And I spot I haven't done anything with the limits yet, so we'll go back and do that as well. Uh, if if uh, x equals a third of pi, then uh, u is the cosine of pi by 3. And you can do it on your calculator. Cos of pi by 3 is um, it's a half, isn't it? And if x equals 0, cos of 0 is 1. Okay, so a slightly odd thing has happened here, hasn't it? That this is going, instead of going from 0 to pi by 3, we're going from 1 up to a half. Now that's, that's the wrong direction, isn't it? And hopefully we know, if we swap the limits round, it just makes our answer negative, because it just means you're doing the subtraction the wrong way around. So let's resolve that fact that we've got that there, and take it to a half and 1, that gets rid of that negative. We're left with 1 minus u squared times u squared du. Um, we're not going to get too put off by this. You may think, yikes, we've still got two things multiplied together. Does this mean it's integration by parts or something scary? Um, let's just multiply it out. And then we wouldn't have two things multiplied together. There's no harm in just trying to simplify things a little bit. We get, a, we get to u squared minus u to the 4. We're now ready to integrate. u cubed over 3 minus u to the 5 over 5. Between a half and 1. We're going to put in our values. That is, what's that, a third minus a fifth. Take away, and again, you've got your calculator, so really be careful with, with doing this. This is going to be a half cubed is an eighth. We're dividing by three, so that's one over 24. And a half to the five will be one over 32. Um, we're also dividing by five, so that's 160. Is that right? And then, again, your fractions button on the calculator 
is a good friend. I'm not going to do it in my head. It was 47 over 480. And for the second time in this paper, we found a, a question that didn't give an answer that's particularly reassuring that it was right. But it was. Be confident in what you've done. And if you have got the, the more expensive calculator, you can check that because it gives you. Did it give you that exact value there? Good. Okay. Right.